Clearing Java interview is easy, actually, so you want to land a job as a Java developer? Most people will tell you that it takes years of studying and practice, maybe even a college degree in computer science, to succeed in a Java interview. But what you actually become is someone who's memorized a lot of definitions and can quote books verbatim. That doesn't make you a good programmer. But hey, you can at least explain Java inheritance in perfect English. If you haven't guessed by the title, passing a Java interview is easier than you think. Even if you feel like you're not cut out for programming, you're actually pretty capable. When we say we want to get good at Java, it means a few things. We want to understand the language, solve problems effectively, write efficient code, and impress the interviewers without sounding like a textbook. The problem is, most advice on the internet is either too general or too impractical. You get stuff like practice coding every day, contribute to open source projects, read the documentation. These sound good but aren't always helpful. In the past, some great developers have spent hours debugging code or learning new frameworks on the fly. So, what can you actually do to prepare for a Java interview that's not just the same five generic tips from a random blog? The main thing you need to do is practice solving problems in Java. Here's the game plan. Understand the basics. Let's face it, a solid foundation is the key to conquering any challenge, and Java interviews are no exception. Think of it like building a skyscraper. You can't simply slap together a few random pieces and expect it to stand tall. You need a robust base, a strong framework, and a clear understanding of how everything fits together. That's where the fundamentals of Java come in, the bedrock upon which your coding prowess will be built. Imagine mastering the language, as if you were learning a new language. You wouldn't try to write a novel before knowing your alphabet, would you? No, you'd start with the basics, the alphabet, grammar, and simple sentence structure. Java is no different. Dive into the world of data types, the building blocks of information, integers, decimals, booleans, and strings. Get to know the control structures that dictate the flow of your code, loops, conditionals, and functions. These are the essential tools you'll use to bring your ideas to life. Don't let the thought of learning these fundamentals overwhelm you. There are fantastic resources available to guide you on this journey. Sites like Codecademy and FreeCodeCamp offer interactive courses and engaging tutorials, making the learning process fun and accessible. These platforms act as your personal coding mentors, providing step-by-step -step instructions and hands-on practice. They'll help you build a solid grasp of the basics, paving the way for more advanced concepts and ultimately, conquering those Java interviews with confidence. So, let's get started. Your journey to becoming a Java coding superstar begins with mastering the fundamentals, data structures and algorithms. Now that you've got the basic grammar of Java down, it's time to delve into the world of data structures and algorithms. Think of them as the building blocks for creating efficient and powerful programs. Imagine you're building a house. You need to know how to use bricks, beams, and windows to construct a sturdy and functional structure. Data structures and algorithms are the bricks and beams of coding, providing the framework for organizing and manipulating data. You don't need to become a math prodigy, but having a solid understanding of basic data structures like arrays, lists, stacks, queues, and hash maps is essential. These structures are like containers that hold and organize your data, enabling you to efficiently access, modify, and process information. Next, explore common algorithms like sorting and searching. These are like blueprints for solving specific problems, allowing you to manipulate data in a systematic and efficient way. For example, a sorting algorithm lets you arrange items in a specific order, while a searching algorithm helps you find a particular item within a larger set. The beauty of learning data structures and algorithms is that they are universally applicable. Whether you're working on a web application, a mobile game, or a scientific simulation, understanding these concepts will make you a more efficient and effective programmer. To master these skills, embrace the power of platforms like LeetCode and HackerRank. Think of them as your coding gyms, providing you with a vast collection of challenging problems to solve. As you tackle these challenges, you'll develop a deeper understanding of data structures and algorithms, honing your problem-solving skills, and preparing you for the real-world scenarios you'll encounter during a Java interview. So step up your coding game, get ready to tackle some brain-tickling challenges, and watch your Java expertise soar. Object-Oriented Programming OOP Now that you've got a firm grasp on the fundamentals and the building blocks of coding, it's time to dive into the heart of Java. Object-Oriented Programming OOP Think of OOP as a powerful paradigm, 
a way of thinking about code that helps you create flexible, reusable, and maintainable programs. It's like building a Lego set. You have individual pieces, objects, that you can combine and rearrange to create something amazing. At the core of OOP are concepts like classes, objects, inheritance, polymorphism, and encapsulation. Imagine a class as a blueprint for creating objects. An object is then an instance of that class, containing its own data and behavior. Inheritance allows you to create new classes that inherit the properties and methods of existing classes, fostering code reuse and efficiency. Polymorphism enables objects to take on different forms and behave differently based on the context, adding flexibility and adaptability to your programs. Finally, encapsulation hides the inner workings of an object, protecting its internal data and providing controlled access through defined interfaces. The best way to truly understand these OOP concepts is to get your hands dirty and start building. Create small projects that involve classes, objects, inheritance, and polymorphism. Think of it as a coding playground where you can experiment and see these concepts in action. Try building a simple game, a basic web application, or a data-driven program. As you work through these projects, you'll gain invaluable practical experience, solidify your understanding of OOP principles, and build a portfolio that showcases your skills. So embrace the power of OOP, put your coding knowledge to the test, and watch your Java expertise grow with each project you create. Java libraries and frameworks. You've mastered the core principles of Java, you've wrestled with data structures and algorithms, and you've grasped the elegance of object-oriented programming. Now, it's time to level up your game and explore the world of Java libraries and frameworks. Think of them as powerful tools that extend your coding capabilities and make your life as a developer much easier. Imagine you're a carpenter. You've got your basic tools, hammer, saw, screwdriver, but for certain tasks you need specialized tools like a drill press or a router. Java libraries and frameworks are like those specialized tools, providing pre-built components and functionalities that streamline development, save time, and allow you to focus on the unique aspects of your project. Popular libraries and frameworks like Spring, Hibernate, and Maven are essential to know. Spring, for instance, is a powerful framework that simplifies the development of enterprise applications, while Hibernate offers an elegant way to interact with databases. Maven, on the other hand, is a build automation tool that simplifies the process of compiling, testing, and packaging your Java code. You don't need to become a guru on all of them, but understanding their basic functionality and being able to set up a basic project using them can significantly impress potential employers. Think of it as demonstrating your willingness to learn and adapt to the ever-evolving world of Java development. Explore these libraries and frameworks, experiment with their features, and build small projects that showcase your understanding. The more you interact with them, the more comfortable you'll become, and the more confidence you'll have when faced with a Java interview. So embrace the world of libraries and frameworks, leverage their power, and boost your Java skills to new heights. Practice coding interviews. You've laid the groundwork, you've explored the landscape of Java, and you're feeling confident about your skills. But there's one final hurdle to conquer, the coding interview itself. Think of it as a performance, where you need to showcase your abilities under pressure and in a specific format. Just like a musician practices their scales and a chef hones their knife skills, you need to prepare for the coding interview by practicing, practicing, practicing. Platforms like LeetCode, HackerRank, and InterviewBit are your backstage passes to the coding interview world. They offer a treasure trove of real interview questions, covering a wide range of topics, from data structures and algorithms to object-oriented programming and system design. Approach these practice questions with the same seriousness you'd bring to a real interview. Set a timer, simulating the time constraints you'll encounter in the actual interview. Pay attention to your coding style, efficiency, and the clarity of your solutions. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. They are valuable learning opportunities. Each practice problem you solve strengthens your problem-solving skills builds your confidence, and prepares you for the mental and technical challenges you'll face. Think of these platforms as your personal coding coaches, providing you with invaluable feedback and helping you refine your approach. As you tackle more and more problems, you'll develop a deeper understanding of common coding patterns, improve your ability to translate abstract concepts into working code, and build the resilience to remain calm and focused under pressure. So get ready to code, get ready to solve, and get ready to conquer those coding interviews with the confidence of a seasoned coder. Build projects. 
You've done the groundwork, you've tackled the challenges, and you've practiced your coding skills. But there's one more crucial step to truly master Java and stand out in interviews, building projects. Think of it like learning to play a musical instrument. You can practice scales and chords all you want, but it's the actual act of composing and performing that truly elevates your musicianship. Projects are your coding compositions, showcasing your ability to apply your knowledge, solve real-world problems, and create something tangible. Start by building small projects that interest you. Maybe you want to create a simple web application, a game, or a data analysis tool. These projects are your proving ground, allowing you to experiment with various libraries and frameworks, test your problem-solving skills, and gain practical experience in translating concepts into working code. Don't be afraid to dive into the world of open source projects. These projects are collaborative efforts, giving you the opportunity to contribute to real world applications, learn from experienced developers, and gain exposure to different coding styles and approaches. Think of these projects as your coding portfolio, demonstrating your skills, creativity, and passion for Java development. During an interview, you can talk about your projects with enthusiasm, sharing your challenges, solutions, and what you learned along the way. It's a chance to show your potential employers that you're not just a bookworm who can regurgitate concepts, but a hands-on coder who can create and contribute. So get out there, build your projects, make your mark on the open source world, and let your coding passion shine. Understand the JVM. You've conquered the core principles, built your coding muscle, and even created some impressive projects. Now, it's time to delve beneath the surface and uncover the inner workings of Java. Think of it like understanding the engine of a car. You can drive a car without knowing how the engine works, but having that deeper understanding allows you to appreciate its intricacies, troubleshoot problems, and drive with greater confidence. The Java Virtual Machine, JVM, is the engine of Java, and understanding its mechanisms elevates your understanding of the language and makes you a more well-rounded developer. The JVM is the magic behind the scenes that allows your Java code to run on different platforms. Knowing how the JVM manages memory, collects garbage, and loads classes is like peering into the engine room of Java, giving you a deeper appreciation for how the language operates. Understanding these concepts shows you have a deeper understanding of how Java works under the hood setting you apart from those who only know the surface level. Imagine explaining how the JVM manages memory. You can talk about the heap, the stack, and the different generations of garbage collection. You can describe how the JVM allocates memory to objects and reclaims memory when objects are no longer needed. This knowledge not only impresses potential employers, but also allows you to write more efficient and memory-conscious code. So take the time to explore the JVM, dive into its architecture, and grasp how it manages the life cycle of your Java programs. This deeper understanding will not only enrich your coding journey, but also help you shine in your interviews, demonstrating a level of knowledge and curiosity that goes beyond the basics. Mock interviews. You've mastered the fundamentals, honed your coding skills, and even explored the hidden depths of the JVM. Now it's time to put your knowledge to the test in a real-world setting, the interview. But before you walk into that pressure cooker environment, you need to prepare for the ultimate performance, the mock interview. Imagine you're an actor preparing for a big role. You wouldn't just rehearse your lines, you'd rehearse the entire scene, interacting with other actors, receiving feedback from the director, and refining your performance. Mock interviews are your rehearsals for the Java interview stage, allowing you to practice your communication, problem solving, and overall presentation in a safe and controlled environment. Think of mock interviews as a collaborative learning experience. Find a friend who is also preparing for Java interviews, or explore services like Pramp, which connect you with other developers for mock interviews. During the interview, focus on articulating your thought process, explaining your code, and receiving feedback on your approach. Don't just focus on getting the right answer. Focus on showcasing your ability to think critically, solve problems effectively, and communicate your ideas clearly. These mock interviews are invaluable opportunities to improve your communication skills, build confidence, and identify areas where you need to improve. They also provide a chance to receive constructive feedback, helping you refine your presentation and become more comfortable with the interview process. So gather your practice partners, prepare your coding challenges, and dive into the world of mock interviews. You'll emerge from these sessions more confident, more articulate, and ready to shine in your real Java interviews. Behavioral questions. 
you've honed your technical skills, practiced your coding abilities, and even tackled the inner workings of the JVM. But there's one more crucial element to a successful Java interview, the behavioral questions. Think of these as the soft skills assessment, where interviewers delve into your personality, work style, and experiences to see if you're a good fit for their team. Imagine you're applying for a role as a musician in a band. The band leader wouldn't just listen to you play your instrument. They'd want to know how you interact with other musicians, how you handle pressure, and how you contribute to the overall performance. Behavioral questions are the band leader's way of assessing your team player qualities and understanding how you approach challenges. Prepare for common questions about your past experiences, challenges you've faced, and how you work in a team. Think about projects you've worked on, challenges you overcame, and situations where you had to collaborate with others. Reflect on your approach, the decisions you made, and the lessons you learned. Practice articulating your experiences in a clear and concise manner, using specific examples to illustrate your points. Don't just focus on the technical skills. Emphasize your ability to learn quickly, adapt to new environments, and work effectively as part of a team. Showcase your problem-solving skills, your ability to communicate clearly, and your willingness to go the extra mile. Remember, behavioral questions are your opportunity to demonstrate your soft skills and show that you're a valuable asset, not just a technical expert. So, get ready to showcase your personality, your experiences, and your teamwork skills. You'll be well prepared to answer those behavioral questions with confidence and impress potential employers with your overall suitability for the role. Keep learning. You've conquered the interview process, landed your dream Java job, and are now a part of the exciting world of software development. But the journey doesn't end there. The tech world is a constantly evolving landscape, with new languages, frameworks, and trends emerging all the time. To stay ahead of the curve, to remain relevant and competitive, you need to embrace a lifelong commitment to learning. Imagine you're a chef. You've mastered the basics, you can whip up a fantastic meal, but the culinary world is constantly evolving. New ingredients, techniques, and culinary trends emerge, pushing you to stay updated and expand your repertoire. The same holds true for Java developers. Java itself is constantly being updated, with new features and improvements released regularly. New libraries and frameworks are developed, offering powerful solutions for various tasks. And the tech industry as a whole is evolving at a rapid pace, driven by trends like cloud computing, artificial intelligence, and big data. Think of learning as a continuous journey, not a destination. Stay curious, explore new technologies, and embrace the challenge of staying ahead of the curve. Read blogs, attend conferences, participate in online communities, and engage in open source projects. These are your avenues for staying informed, connecting with other developers, and expanding your knowledge. Remember, learning isn't just about staying relevant. It's about pushing your boundaries, exploring new possibilities, and growing as a developer. Embrace the challenge of continuous learning, stay passionate about Java, and you'll find yourself on a rewarding journey of growth, discovery, and innovation. Let's talk about one more thing, confidence. In an interview, it's not just about what you know, but also how you present it. Be calm. Take your time to think through problems and communicate clearly. If you get stuck, explain your thought process. Interviewers often care more about how you approach a problem than whether you get the perfect answer right away. So to sum up, passing a Java interview is all about solidifying your basics, practicing problem solving, understanding OOP principles, getting hands-on with projects, and staying confident. It's not about memorizing every single method in the Java API, or reading every Java book ever published. If you're ready to take on the challenge, there's a world of resources out there to help you. And hey, while you're preparing, maybe subscribe to my channel. Your support helps fund more content to make learning Java and everything else easier for everyone. Happy coding.